Welcome everybody to the regular, usual, or unusual, depending upon how you look at it, <laughs> traditional. <laughs> Folks, just don't pay any attention. Don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> to the uh, traditional service at uh, Christ Fellowship. Um, and uh, I want, we're going to have some great hymns and, uh, and then a, fa I know a fantastic uh, sermon by our pastor. Terry Miller. So we're going to start off with uh, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. That's 122. The numbers on the board should be correct. And that's where we're starting with the first camera. <laughs> soon right after the next hymn, which is page 54, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, no mercies I see. All I have here, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. for Jesus and to look yeah. for a wife. I mean, that's like Old Testament stuff going together, you know. You gotta watch he's it. been looking a long uh, time. He's been yeah. looking a long time, yeah. You see some, some of those women shaking their heads, you see that? Yeah. You have to go like this? They're judging him. They know. They yeah. Don't be judging him. <laughs> you know, the judge just, just observation, not I criticism. Know. I understand. They're yeah. just reporting. I <laughs> okay, any uh, prayer? Pray for the country. Pray for this country. You know, if something happens, if this country goes down the tubes, there ain't much out there. It's going to pray for Christians throughout the world. No, I tell you. Pray for our faith. Pray for faithful Christians. Pray for a revival. Okay, let's go. Who else? Yeah, Julie. This is Clark. Clark, who's on a trip. He, where's he in uh, Virginia? Jersey. Jersey. We pray that he uh, links up with some really good people there and keeps himself okay and keeps himself in prayer. And we need to be praying for him. Pray for Clark. Okay, pray for Julie. That she can hold it together. I know she worries about him. You know, I, 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 I checked with the Lord, Julie. He said, just tell Julie, well, all the worry in the world ain't going to protect him. I'll take care of him. I want you to know he's in the Lord's hands. You got no problem. Okay, so we're praying for Julie. Yes, Doug. Uh, 
pray for me that I get better and my damage to the sermon by being no more that I'm in good shape sir. You're in great shape. You're looking good to me. Because well, I got a number one rating. The number one, you got the A plus there. <laughs> He's the number one A plus. Okay. Yes. Well, so yesterday, Brown County deputy was killed in a car accident. While Who was killed in a car accident? Uh, Brown County deputy. Okay. Uh, responding to a domestic violence call. Was killed in the intersection. And all our uh, first responders and our men and women overseas and people in the service. Oh, okay, who else? Mary Ann, whom we know from the meeting. Oh, Mary, Mary Ann? Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Her <laughs> son, Anthony, he's in his 30s. He was in a serious car accident in 2016. Hmm. He's been through 18 surgeries, I think 11 blood transfusions. He's going wow. in for his 19th surgery. She's just thankful that she's he's alive and you know he can still hug his mother. And she's been very strong for him. So again, his 19th surgery is coming wow. up. So prayers for him wow. and Ariane as well and all their family. Okay, Ariana. Ariane. 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 Anthony. His name is 19 right. surgeries. Wow, that's really pray for all our children and our grandchildren. Yes. You know, pray specifically to my particular children child who what? I'm going to get to Lynn. I'm going to pray specifically to a particular child of mine who shall remain nameless because she might listen to this and she won't like it if I make a mention her name. But I'm praying that uh, I'm praying for her. Lord knows I'm praying for her. Okay, praying for my wife too because uh, she's been living with me. So I'm they fall under the category friends and family. Friends and family. Okay, Lynn. Friends and family? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you pray for me, pray for my wife to keep her company. Absolutely. I'm, I'm praying for your wife. We're praying for your wife all the time. I know the Lord is watching over her. That's the only explanation. Thank you. No, absolutely. Absolutely. She ga he gave you exactly what you needed. You got that right. Huh? <laughs> Would you come home with me and tell my wife that I got at least one thing right? I remember what you did do that for. Don't be laughing at me, Jeanette. Okay. Praying for your mom. Praying for your mom in Panama. Yes. Okay. Salvation for the family. Family in Panama, and for this, and all this is salvation for anybody, anybody in our family, friends who have not uh, made the Lord Jesus. Their, their Lord and Savior. Yes, I'm sorry. Who else? Jerry, you got some? You got to pray for uh, something? Just my family. Uh, too. Okay, we got, that. Family. we got that covered. Yeah. Okay. Pray for John that he get a job and he get a car or some transportation, although he's doing pretty good. He seems to get around. He's very resilient. You know, no matter what the Lord throws at him, he's pretty good at that. Pray for, yeah. you. Pray for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate your prayer. Dan. Uh, all our friends around the world, a lot of praise and thanks and a lot of prayers for health and for right. improved finances, education. There are many issues, but they're, they're people of great, great faith, so they appreciate the prayers. So right, I know. And in all in of the Indonesia, churches the Philippines, there. and in Mexico, and in uh, Saudi Arabia, too. We have people there. And Sakuntala and Bali. Sakuntala, yeah. Always Mary and Sherry May in the Philippines. Right. Right. in the Philippines and okay. all the churches. Pray for our churches in this area too, as well as all over the world, but specifically in our area. Christ <coughs> Fellowship, there's a lot of really good churches. Okay, Lord Jesus, we just are so thankful that once again we get to be here worshiping you. We worship you every day. Pray and I hope that we all worship Jesus and think of him every single day and every minute of the day. We pray for Tom Brown and the Brown family and the loss of his mother, a real saint. Pray for uh, Dwayne. Pray for uh, Clark and his trip and Julie. Pray, uh, pray not only for Doug and his health, but pray for his wonderful wife. And uh, what a prayer warrior, what a 
incredible wife she is. And we pray for Tally's prayers. For the, uh, we, we pray for the Broward Sheriff's Office who was killed on the way to a, uh, a scene. We pray for all our first responders and all our police officers and servicemen. Pray for Ariane's son, Anthony, who's going in for his 19th surgery. For all our children and friends and family and grandchildren. Pray for salvation for all the people we know. Pray that we give good testimony. We're able to help a lot of people with our testimony just when they meet us. And that we are bold and that we are able to talk about Jesus Christ and give testimonies to what he's done in our life. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your finished work on the cross. And you're inviting us and allowing us to have a relationship with you. We pray for this church and the churches in this area. Yes, Lord. We thank you for all this and pray for all this in your blessed son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. And the next song is going to be, I guess, 387. I don't know what that is. Actually, I have a list, but I'm going to turn to it. I didn't have any idea. 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 I
to my heart and then we're going to take our collection and then one more hymn and then we're going to have our message so let's start with since Jesus came into my heart any second do that. 441 
second. Uh, caught up. Okay, so we're gonna have our we're gonna have our collection now. Owen, are you gonna be our collector? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful, grateful for our church here and our ability to have this service. And we so pray that all over the world, many services like this are happening and many more. And there's just a groundswell of revival so the churches just explode throughout the world, especially here in South Florida. Lord, we ask you to bless our tithes and offerings and let them be used for the express purpose of carrying the gospel, bearing fruit, so we have more people, more people who have never heard the gospel before hear it, or maybe hear it with a different ear, so they may come to know you as Lord and Savior. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. song there is a fountain we haven't yeah. sung this in a long time great song <laughs> Church of God is saved to sin. 
say welcome tonight not only to our congregation here but to the congregation on the internet that reaches around the world I've been thrilled even this week to see how many have responded and listened and they, they put on there that they liked the sermon I hope they were telling the truth <laughs> but uh, we're going to begin a new series tonight I hope to preach in the next few weeks from First and Second Peter, the New Living Translation, First and Second Peter. So while you're doing that, let me say that my wife is to have a birthday on Thursday. And uh, whether you want to or not, we're going to sing Happy Birthday <laughs> if Pauline will get back to the piano. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey, I should have forewarned you. And we're going to sing happy birthday to Doris. Now, you wait. She's going to come up here. I want you all to see her. She has a lot of friends online, and I want you to see how beautiful my 90-year-old wife is going to be, okay? Now, Esai told us how old she was a while ago. I still don't believe that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I tell you what. She has her own fan club around here. You know, it's easy to be the preacher's wife because she doesn't have to preach and point her finger at everything, you know. And, uh, but I want to tell you, she, she taught the best lesson this morning in her Bible study right here in this room. She has every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And I want to invite all you ladies, if you're not att attending a Bible study on Sunday morning anywhere, we would surely like to invite you, I guarantee you. And uh, well, you there, won't be disappointed. There are some, uh, one man that comes too, but so you can, well, even if you're male, we'll let you in. Okay. <laughs> well, some of the men that have uh, attended have gone on to glory. So we need some more men to take their place. One of our men uh, was able to be here today. But you know, uh, Doris spends a lot of time preparing. And she starts, a lot of times when she gets home on Sunday night, she'll start reading her lesson, get the scripture in her heart. And every night during the week, she's back there in her office studying God's word. And, and I love her for that. And I just want you to know, I'm not, I'm not bragging on her, I'm just, informing you so you'll appreciate her. I learn more than anybody else. That's right. I've always said that the teacher learns more 
than anybody. When you start teaching and sharing from God's Word with others, that's the highest, not only privilege you have, but that's the most precious time that you'll ever spend with the Lord. And uh, I'm going to ask my wife to pray for me tonight. Okay? You notice uh, she went to the store solo today. I mean to, this week. She drove up there. She didn't take a walker. She walked and shopped for two hours. Went to the drugstore and, and loaded those groceries. If you had seen what she got home with, and she carried them up the ramp in our garage into the house, one bag at a time until she got them all put up. And you know what she told me this week? She said about three weeks ago, somebody at church put her on a prayer list. And she said, my, hurt, my hip has not hurt since that day. Now you can believe what you want to. I know what I believe about it. So I give God all the glory. Yeah. Let's sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. John Glenn is in heaven listening. He would say to you, that's not all there is to that song. First time I heard him say that, I said, what? He said, there's another verse. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again in Christ Jesus. You'll always have two. Isn't that great? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Doris, lead us in prayer, will you? Our Father, we do thank you for all the blessings that you give us. I personally thank you that you've given me the help that you have. And Father, I just pray that tonight as we study your word, that your spirit might speak to our hearts. And Father, that you will uh, just uh, help us to be the witness that we need to be to others around us who need Jesus so desperately. And so, Father, we commit this service to you and thank you for what you're going to do in our midst tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. All right, you have your Bible open or your iPad, whatever. And I know that it's troublesome, let me say again, to some in America who've grown up on the King James or the American Standard Version or the New Living Translation. And I'm reading from that one tonight, the revised New Living Translation in the language of the people. And I haven't found any heresy yet in this translation. But I have learned a lot and been blessed by it. Read it tonight from chapter 1, 1 Peter. Beginning at the first verse. This letter from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father knew you, now listen to this, and chose you long ago. And his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been clean or cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we just sang that song 
What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Oh, my dear friend, listen to this. May God give you more and more grace and peace. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. Is there anything that we need in our world tonight more than more grace, God's undeserved, unearned, unmeasured favor? Is there anything we need more than grace? And certainly no one will argue with us on we need peace. Peace among family members, friends, neighbors. You know, the Lord said we're even to love our enemies. To pray for those who despitefully use us and persecute us, the scriptures said. So we just know by that very statement that believers are going to be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Oh, come on. There's a person I've been trying to get a hold of for four weeks. When do you think they call me? Tonight during the message. I'm glad to know they're still alive. You know, just that suddenly, I, I can't help Forgive me for this. But just that suddenly the Lord's going to blow the trumpet <laughs> and the dead in Christ are going to rise. Just be that unexpected. I praise God for him. I'll answer that later. Forgive me. Now they were scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Capodicea, Asia, and Bithynia because of persecution. These were not only God's precious people, but persecuted people. They were pilgrims and strangers on the earth. They could sing that song that I've heard in Baptist churches. This world's not my home, I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Do you feel that way sometimes? You know, I find the closer I get to the Lord, the further I get away from the world. You find that true? That song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, The Things of Earth, will grow strangely dim Amen. in the eyes of his glory and grace. Amen? Amen? So Peter's writing now, that great, great preacher of Pentecost. Huh. That was the first true evangelist I guess we had in the New Testament after the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts chapter 2. Now look at this. May God give you more and more. Notice that's repeated in this verse. More and more. The translator trying to really share what the what the original language says. You know, just can't get enough. There's an old song I love, Pauline. More of you. Of the world, I've had enough. But what I need is more of you. I remember the first time I heard one of the greatest solos that Baptist ever produced, Betty Stallnacker, singing at a conference, More of You, Lord. And with tears running down her cheeks, More of You. See, we have him, but we need more. Now let me, let me tell you how that works, all right? How do we get more? We grow in grace and knowledge, and our container gets bigger. Amen. See? We can understand more. We can have more of his grace and more of his mercy and more of his love. And as the old song said, more like the master, that's one of our hymns we sing in America. 
more like the master I would ever be, more of his meekness, more humility, more zeal to labor, more courage to be true, more consecration for work he bids me do. And the chorus says, Take thou my life, I would be thine alone. Take thou my heart and make it all thine own. Purge me, excuse me, purge me from sin. O Lord, I now implore. Wash me and keep me thine forevermore. And that sort of goes along with that song we repeated recently, Higher Ground, you know. Pressing on the upward way. So Peter was desiring that these people, though they were already children of God and knew his power in their life, that they would have more and more grace during this time of persecution and trial. They were going through it, boy. I mean, they were really going through it. We know by what he continues to say in the next few verses. Now he says, all praise to God. Hey, remember, he's the source. He's the force in your life. He's the source. He's the force of eternal life. Here it is. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Have you been born again? That was Jesus' question to Nicodemus when he came to him one night and said, Master, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? You know how Jesus indirectly answered that? Have you ever really thought about it? Preachers used to preach this a lot more than they do in recent years that I've listened to. Not being critical, as I said a moment ago, it's an observation, not a criticism. Don't want to be negative. But I want to say, you know, that, that uh, we've been negligent along these lines. Now all praise to the Father of our Lord Jesus by his great mercy that we have been born again. Jesus said you must be born again. It's not an option for God's people. You must be born again. Now, when a man is born of the water, Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. The physical birth is a water birth. All you mothers know that. When you're ready to give birth and you know the that you're due, the time has come and the, the water breaks. Sometimes the taxi cab driver has to deliver the baby in the seat of the cab because he didn't get to the hospital on time. I could tell a lot of stories about that. But you know, that which is born of the water that which is born of flesh, that's the water birth, the flesh. And that which is born of the spirit, when we're born again, is a spiritual birth. You've got to be born twice. And that's why I mentioned, as we sang the song, Happy Birthday, that verse that John added, <laughs> that I never heard until I heard John Glenn sing it here in this chapel. And that's been several years ago, when he first came to our fellowship. But now look, he's begotten us again, the King James says, to a life full of hope. Amen. Now I want to give that title to our message tonight. A life full of hope. When we've been begotten again, we receive a life that's full of hope. No need, hey, to ever feel hopeless again. Whatever the struggle, whatever the trial, whatever the hardship, whatever the heartache, my friend, 
We've been begotten again to a life full of hope. Now how is that? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, when Jesus came out of that tomb, he proved that there was eternal life. He didn't swoon, as some theologians have tried to tell us. The swoon theory, you know, he didn't really die. Let me tell you, friend. He shed his life's blood on that cross. Jesus said, I lay down my life and I'll take it up again. I want to pick up where I left off. Amen? Amen? And that hope we have because Jesus lives, we too shall live also. You know, Paul reminded us in his Corinthian letter, his first letter, 15th chapter. If all the hope we have, and if we don't have that hope that I'm speaking about tonight, he said we're of all men most pitiable, and our preaching is vain. If the dead don't rise from the grave, he said everything we're doing is of no avail. It's just worthless. We might as well eat, drink, and be merry tomorrow, for tomorrow we die. All right, now notice this. So we praise the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he gave his son, and by his grace and mercy we have been born again because God raised Jesus from the dead, and we shall live too. Now we live with great expectation. We have a priceless inheritance. Whoa. A priceless inheritance. King James says, we've been gotten again to a life full of hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. It's unfading, unsullied, the King James says. That's not a word we use much anymore. Unsullied, unfading, and undefiled. Three words he uses. And they also use it in the translation of the King James translation of the scripture from Greek to English, okay? From Aramaic to English. Now look at this. We have this great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance. Inheritance that is kept in heaven for you pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. <laughs> Let me read that again. Isn't that beautiful? Now here it is. Look. We have an inheritance that is kept in heaven for us, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through our faith, God is protecting us by his power until we receive the final stage, I like to put it, of our salvation. The completion of the salvation of our soul. Now we know that the Bible teaches in Paul's words, 1 Thessalonians 5, that we are body, soul, and spirit. And Paul prayed for the Thessalonians when he said, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body will pre be preserved blameless until the coming of Jesus Christ. Blameless. So all these words we're reading now to help these people to go beyond anything they've ever experienced in their own walk with the Lord. But remember he said we're being protected by, protected by his power until we reach that day. That salvation that is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. On the last day for all to see. Wonder when that'll be. Wonder when that'll be. So what are we to do in the meantime, verse 4? Excuse me. Verse 6. So be truly glad 
Be truly glad. That means rejoice. Be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Oh, boy. Now, I'm not going to repeat what I said last week. But some of these saints around some of the churches where I've preached, they, they're just sad sacks. They're not happy. Can people tell by, by looking at us that we're rejoicing in Jesus? That we're rejoicing and we have a life full of hope that the best is yet to come? We're looking beyond these present problems that we have? Amen. These temptations, these trials, the heartache, the loss of loved ones and friends and family members? I hope we're looking beyond that day. We should be truly glad there's a wonderful joy for us, even though we must endure many trials for a little while. For a little while. Only last for a little while. According to God's timing, right? One day is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. You know, our life's just a little drop in the bucket, right? Just a, you know, you know, really, when you think about it that way, it's almost funny. I want everybody to know that's listening to this message that the poet was right, and I quote this often, the best is yet to come. The last of life, the Christian life, for which the first was made. Now what did Jesus say? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Oh, they were troubled in their hearts because he was going to leave them and they didn't understand. He said, let not, let not your heart be troubled. How many times have you gone to funeral services and heard some minister get up and say, I'm going to read from John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. Modern translation translated this way. Many dwelling places. I go down and I see all these new apartments going up all over Miami. Drove down to US 1 down there where you've been working some, John. Seeing those apartments go up. Those little, I call them little, little porches that are on every, le every level, all those little apartments. They can go sit on their porch and look, look at all the crazy people go by. <laughs> Out there scrambling around, you know, wondering why they don't have more of this and more of that. and why somebody's driving a bigger and a better car than they are, why they can't afford to live out in the suburbs in one of those big fancy places, you know, up in Pinecrest. Have you all been to Pinecrest and driven around? Have you driven around Pinecrest, Pauline? Man, I mean, there's some nice, hey, there's some nice digs over there, as we say. Whoa, some of those homes. There's a lawyer over there named Guy Law. He bought the house next to him when he first bought this huge, beautiful home. And he renovated it and made a place to keep his collection of classic cars. You know, the other day I was thinking about that. I drove by there. I wondered, I wondered if he's going to take those cars with him. He's got cars in there worth over a million dollars apiece. Take my word for it. I've been there. He took me through. He took my son through. I'll never forget. And he said, anytime you want to bring any of your friends over, just, just ring the bell. I'll come. Boy, the other day I saw him on the news. They were interviewing him on Fox News about what he thought about the present situation in our country. And, I, you know, I felt really important. Man, I know that man. He's my friend, you know. But you know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to look around and see all my friends up there. Oh, man. You know, one of the first people I'm going to look up is my grandmother and my grandfather. The lady who said to me she gave me all the money she had in a little envelope. She robbed her little hiding place and 
put it all in an envelope. She said, don't you tell Grandpa I gave you this. It's none of his business. <laughs> yeah, I preached a revival in a little church down in the country in Missouri. And she said, don't you let those professors down there in that, se she meant to say seminary, she said in that cemetery, <laughs> don't you let them ruin you, boy. You just keep preaching what you're preaching. Yeah, that's what she said. So I've been trying to do that, Grandma. I want you to know that. And I, I want you to know that, uh, <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait to hug her old neck. You know, she and Grandpa got out of their bed and let Doris and I sleep at. A feather bed. You ever sleep in a feather bed? You know, you have to. <laughs> boy, it's, it's, a, it's the exact opposite of that mattress that I sleep on now. You know, the memory foam. Yeah. You can you have to get out of bed to turn on to turn to turn over in a feather bed. I'm not exaggerating. Am I right? Yeah, you do. How many of you ever slept in a feather bed? A homemade feather bed. Yeah. Buddy, let me tell you. <laughs> they don't sell those down at the at the mattress store down here on US-1. <laughs> oh, praise God, I don't have to sleep on a feather bed. You know, when Doris and I first married and we'd go to our church field on the weekends now, you folks overseas don't understand. I was a student going to college and, and I had to go to my church field on weekends and I'd go up on Saturday, we had a Saturday night service and uh, then we'd, we'd stay through both services on Sunday. And some, somebody would invite us to stay in their home. Now we have some experiences. We could write a book about that. And, and they didn't have central heating. You know what I'm saying? No central air. <laughs> oh my goodness. And no indoor plumbing in some of them. <laughs> Forgive me, my wife would wake up and she'd say, is it morning yet? <laughs> Bless her heart. You know, she's had trouble lately sleeping through the night and I think I think she's averted back to her, to her early years in marriage when we used to, we'd sleep about an hour or two and then wake up, you know and look, just look at the clock to see if it's time to get up and go to school. You know, we're always afraid we're going to miss a class because we, we had to drive about 45 minutes from where we were living on the church field and we'd memorize our Greek words for our Greek word. We had a 10 word test every time we'd be, you know, from, English, from Greek to English. And we had flashcards, she'd make them out and we'd go through those cards while while I was driving down the road. And that's the way we memorize scripture. The truth. So help it. <laughs> but I will never as long as I live forget that one night that she woke up and she said, <laughs> boy, it was cold. She said, if you think I'm going outside to go to the, you know, the outhouse in this weather, you're crazy. <laughs> oh, the joy of being a preacher's wife. I, I should have said right then, you remember when you took me for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. We've been reliving some of those days recently, and uh, we've had a lot of fun. You know, we didn't go out of the house. Saturday, except she'd go out to the, put something in the trash, the garbage. Mm. But I never went out, of, I never went into the garage, never left the house. But we cleaned and we uh, dusted and we, we just did the things that needed to be done. Yeah. Changed the sheets. That's why this is on my mind. Daniel, 
Did you ever change the sheets on one of those big mattresses that I'm talking about? On a king size bed? Yeah, and you gotta tuck that sheet, you gotta lift that thing up. I'm sitting in a wheelchair lifting up the mattress, you know, getting the sheet up in there. And I thought about it, I got tickled. I, I was thinking about that, that feather bed experience, you know, at my grandparents' house and in the churches where I served. Man, that was, that was, some, that was some deal. And I know God had something better than that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but, but now look at this. So be truly glad, verse 6. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. That's when you find out you, you, you're a true metal boy. It is being tested, your faith is being tested, as fire tests and purifies gold. Amen. Now the Bible in the Old Testament says, the refining pot is for the silver, but the gold is placed in the fire. You know that golden calf? Yeah. I saw on the news just today. The archaeologists have discovered where they believe every evidence, and they went through all the evidence, why they believe this is the spot in the wilderness where they melted that gold that they brought out of Egypt when they were wandering in the wilderness. And they made the golden calf and worshipped it. And they can see the, the in the stones. You know, they have ways of check, testing all that. And I said, Doris, I learned more here in 30 minutes watching this program than I learned in all the archaeology classes I took in seminary. You know, we live in a wonderful day, friend. We don't, we don't appreciate fully. You know, we're... We're so busy listening to all the problems we have and all the politicians that can't get together on what they ought to be doing. But let me tell you, friend, God has not changed his plan. Not one iota. The Bible says in his word, this is his promise, not one jot or tittle, the smallest little punctuation points in the scriptures will be changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. For in his own words, he said, I am the Lord thy God, who changeth not. Now listen to me. If he was that upset with people in the Old Testament, who didn't have the New Testament, who didn't have the indwelling Holy Spirit that we enjoy under the New Covenant, how much more impatient must he be with his own children who've been born again who've received the promised Holy Spirit, have the guarantee of future bliss, Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2. We have the earnest of our inheritance. We've already received it. Now, you know, it's a good thing I'm not God. As I heard one preacher say when I was a young man, I wouldn't put up with us anymore. <laughs> Now you think about the present day and what we're going through, not only in our nation, but nations around the world. And you think about it. And I think about the verse that goes with this. And the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations, plural, that forget God. Boy, am I glad, I'm glad that old account was settled. The old song said the old account was settled long ago. I got it settled, brother. Have you got it settled? I want to ask you folks out there in the inter in, on the internet, have you got it settled? Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Because these trials will show us 
whether or not our faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Underline that. Amen. 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 Now that's the day I'm looking for. Do you think I'm just, my dad used to say this. He'd look at me when he told me something, you know, 50 times and he had to tell me again. And he'd say, so how many times do I have to tell you that? He said, I've told you till I can hear my head rattle. Yeah. I mean, I think God must feel that way. Our Heavenly Father. How many times do I have to tell you? My wife talked this morning about how in the Old Testament that Israel, God's people, God's chosen people, like we are in the New Testament. How many times God had to bring some nation in, put them in bondage and slavery to another nation, and chasten them, chasten them, discipline them, until they did what? Until they repent. We were looking up the verse. Lars couldn't remember the reference, and, and I gave it to her, and she looked at her Bible, but she didn't go down far enough because it's a, a new trend, a new uh, NIV, new international version. She didn't read down far enough, and I kept telling her, it's in Second Chronicles chapter 7. And she turned and read, but, but she didn't get that far. You know what it says? If my people, which are called by my name, now listen to it. Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Now wait a minute. And turn from their wicked way. That's repentance. To turn around. To make a U-turn from the way they were going. See? Let me go over it again. If my people will, I will. Now you can, listen, I don't care who the president is. I don't care who the members of Congress are or the House of Representatives. I don't give a flip. It's not going to make a bit of difference till people turn back to God. And you can try to walk the middle of the road like some people are politically, but I want to tell you, friend, there is no middle road spiritually. You can't straddle a fence. You know what I learned at my grandparents' house, grandparents that I mentioned a moment ago? When you go through a barbed wire fence, you better have somebody that's pretty strong to hold that wire up so you can crawl through without ripping your bridges. <laughs> Are you living? You try to straddle that wire, buddy. The same goes for women tear your dress or whatever. I've seen my, my dad's baby sister, Modine, when she was still living at home and I was down visiting one summer. We were walking to church and we, we didn't go on the road on the long way. We took the shortcut and we went through several fields. I don't know how many different farms that we were, you know, we were, we were there were no, tre no trespassing signs there, you know. They, they knew that people did it all the time, and we saw the cows and the horses and everything, and we'd, we'd crawl through the barbed wire fence, take a shortcut. And I'd see Modine on Saturday night. She'd get a Sears catalog, tear out a page, set it on the old kitchen table, and she had some shoe polish, and she'd polish her white shoes. And she was hoping she wasn't going to hit any mud all the wrong way to church. All those memories, you know, flood my mind. And Modine would take me by the hand and she'd say, now, I'll hold the fence for you. 
you hold it for me. She'd put her foot down on that, take her hand between the barbs on the wire, hold it up, and I'd get through. You know what? You know what Peter's trying to do? He's trying to make a way. Show these people. We're going to read it in the morning and close it. I'm out of, I'm out of time, so I missed her. Let's do this. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. You trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Have you seen anybody do that lately? Man, I've heard a lot of moaning and groaning and complaining. How many people do you know in your circle of friends, your family members, your small group at church or whatever? Now you be honest with me. Friday night, how many are sitting around just so full of joy they can hardly stand it? How many have such great expectations of what is on the way that they just get excited about it like little children? Do you see those girls that won that championship, the soccer team, hugging on each other? You'd have thought they were kindergarten children, just excited as if they had a brand new dog. You know what I'm saying? Holding up that trophy, kissing the trophy. How long has it been since you've seen Christians get that excited? And when you sang a song, well, Paulie and I know you know it. Let's get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. You know, we talk about people. We talk about weather and things that aren't important at all. But we don't get excited about Jesus. Now, I want you to know that I get emotional. I get excited. And I'm excited about the day that I'm closer to than ever before. When I see the reality of what these scriptures refer to. Now look. His salvation is something even the prophets wanted to know more about. When they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. Listen to what Peter said to these Jews. They wondered what time Our situation, the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about. Look at it. There's divine inspiration right there. They wondered about what the Holy Spirit was referring to as He bore witness in their hearts. Do you have the witness within? You sang a moment ago. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, I have lied in my soul, for which long I have sought. Since Jesus came into my heart. You know what we used to sing? Since Jesus came into our town, the devil is wearing a frown. Many hearts have been changed. Many homes rearranged since Jesus came into our town. <laughs> Amen. 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 You know, you know the, the writers of the New Testament under the inspiration of the Spirit believe that when you change, that's when you're born again. And when you're born again, you make a change. 
and you walk with God, you make a change. And you go through trials and hardships, and your faith is purified, and you trust Him more than ever. Amen. You know that song, Simply Trusting Every Day? Trusting along, trusting all along the way, whatever. Trusting even when my faith would fall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. You know that one, Russ? Simply trusting every day, trusting all along life's way, trusting Him whatever before, trusting Jesus, that is all. The title is Simply Trusting. You know what we do? We try. Yeah. Well, I'm trying. I can't say this too much. Quit trying and start trusting. And now, they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. Why do we read the Old Testament? Because these messages were not for them alone, but for us. Centuries later, we're still reading them. And now this is good news. And now, excuse me, his good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen reading down the first 12 verses of the chapter. You know the angel and glory are longing to see what we already know. See, they can't experience salvation as we understand it. I never read about an angel being born again, did you? You know what a privilege we have? Now look. You know what a promise we have? You know what power we have? You know what a prize is waiting for us at the end of the road? Write those four things down. Do you know? No wonder we can sing, He is so precious to me. My Savior, my friend. Tis heaven to know my Redeemer below. For he is so precious to me. Let's talk about Jesus. Let me sing it one more time. The King of Kings is he, the Lord of Lords, supreme through all eternity. The great I am, the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus evermore. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Listen to me, friend. If you're overseas somewhere with an iPad or a television or maybe over the radio listening to the message, And you've never heard that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I want to tell you that Jesus is the way to heaven. He's the way. There's only one way. And he's the way. He said in his own words, I'm the way, I'm the door. If any man opens the door of his heart, I'll come in. He's the door of the sheep. So the sheep come into the fold and he comes into our heart. Oh, dear friend, trust him today. I want you to enjoy the riches of his glory that we've read about tonight, the riches of the new birth. Oh, yes, you're going to experience the trials and he'll purify that faith 
that trust that you put in him, you'll make it stronger like purified silver or purified gold. He's going to put it in the fire. So don't complain when the fire comes, when your faith would falter. And the old boy said, when you get to the end of your rope, just tie a knot and hang on. Lord, bless those tonight who are struggling right now. They want to trust you, Lord. They want to believe that when you said, if any man would open the door, I will come in. They want Jesus to come into their heart. So help them just right now, wherever they are, to say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. I know I have a lot to learn. I know that I don't understand all about the Christian life. I don't even understand everything that Brother Kerry said in this message. But I want to, Lord. So I'm going to take you as my teacher and my guide. And the one who provide the way every, every step as I walk with you, Lord. I want to walk with you and be what you want me to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to sing our little invitation. I hope tonight that you'll let Jesus have his way in your heart. God to help you. I can assure you there'll be trials on the way till he comes and takes us home to that place we talked about tonight. But I can assure you he'll be with you every step of the way to keep the joy flooding your heart faithfully walk with him. We have, yes, sir. we have a great invitation song on 307, Just As I Am. That's the way we come.
We love you. You know, people I'm preaching to that I've never met, I want you to know I love you in the love of the Lord. I love you because he first loved us. And I love you because the fruit of his spirit in my heart reaches out to you. Even as I preach, you wonder why I'm broken as I preach because I prayed years ago that God would break me for a lost and dying world and give me a burden that I might know the blessing of seeing many people come to Jesus. But friend, don't do it for me. Do it for the one who loved you enough to give his precious blood to lay down his life that we might all have life. You know, Jesus in his own words said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's the abundant life that he speaks about and that Peter talked about tonight in the first verses of this first chapter of his first letter to those who were struggling. And I hope tonight that as you read it again and maybe listen to the message over and over again, that the words will just open up your heart to the truth. And if you haven't been able to trust him tonight, listen, don't give up. You just pray about it and ask the Lord to show you this truth, to reveal it in your heart, in your mind, in your very soul. We love you. We're praying for you. Hope you'll tune in again next week and get someone to tune in with you. God bless you. We love you. Good night. God bless you.